Hello, hello, fellow listeners. Welcome to another episode of Inside Out Alignment, your platform for self-discovery and creativity. Today we have Jane Black with us, and she's a protest, a musician, and a sound healer. Thanks, Jane, for being here with us today. Mm, thank you so much for having me. I'm really honored to be here. Thank you. Well, we want to start by enjoying something really cute and special from Jane this evening. So, Jane, you ready to give us a little bit of your, I'm excited. <laughs> Yes, this is this is what I do at the beginning of my ceremonies. So if if you just want to close your eyes, everyone who's listening, just close your eyes and take deep breaths. Jane, thank you so much. That was so soothing. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. So how did you discover your gift, you know, of singing? Well, you know, I can just remember The Wizard of Oz and Somewhere Over the Rainbow when I was a little girl. I just loved singing and I loved that song. And that's that's my my farthest memory, the farthest back, was singing that song for my mother. Um, I just loved it. And I was a little bit shy about doing it. So I only wanted to do it, you know, in private or when she was maybe doing the dishes and I kind of go over in the other part of the room and I'd sing. And, um, you know, there's such an experience of singing. And one thing that I'll say about that, you know, in, in our culture, we're not really encouraged to sing and dance. And we love it. We love it when other people do it. But it's not a very comfortable thing that, like, most of us are very just comfortable doing around each other. So, um, so I feel like we don't get to have that experience as much. And um, it was just very private and it was something that it's just when you do it, you feel it. So even if you don't even have like a voice that's very in tune, you know, people are like, oh, I just sing by myself in the car or in the shower. We all feel it and it's that feeling. It's this, and, and it's the sound healing that happens when we're releasing the sound, when we're vibrating our vocal cords, that sound that washes over our body and goes through us it's very powerful and it actually heals our own body. And I just got really in touch with that feeling right away when I was young. I just, I always loved it. Wow, wow. I really, I really enjoy, I love that. I love that. It's really soothing. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, it's one of those sounds that you want to have like when you're like 
ready to, you know, to, you've had a long day and it just makes you so relaxed. And then before you know it, you dozed off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So when you found your gift, you know, at, when, because you said you started young and you were singing, but there was one moment when you lost your voice. What actually happened? So I was, I was using my voice incorrectly. You know, voice is, I'll start here. Voice has always been a very big part of my life. I have a big voice. I have a loud voice. I'm very expressive with all of that. But as far as singing for people, all of my young life and all of my young adult life, I did not sing in front of people. I was afraid to, I was totally embarrassed and I kept it to myself. So, um, somewhere in my 20s, in my late 20s, I started having songs come through me. And so it was all that I had ever wanted when I was younger. And it was some dream that I had given up on. So by the time they started coming through me, I felt I had no choice but to honor them because I was so grateful and sing them. And so it was a really scary experience for me getting up and singing in front of people. The first time I ever did it, I mean, I had only just written these songs like a week before and a friend of mine talked me into like performing it the, the night that she put on at this bar in Hollywood. And so I just had three songs and I played them and it was very scary and my, I did my eyes closed the whole time and my kneecaps were shaking. So anyway, I, I, that, was a, that was the whole process for me. Um, I would hear these songs in my dreams and then I would figure out how to play them on my guitar. And then my, my voice is just kind of what would save me. I would just close my eyes and I would sing the song at, at the show. So what, what started happening is I started, the more that I did that, the more spirit would give me more music. And so then the more I had to sing. So I was about a year or two into this process, totally dedicating everything to it because it was so special to me. And I started, I, I started getting my voice taken away from me. I felt like spirit was taking it away from me. And the message was that I was doing the wrong things with my voice. Energetically, I was, um, I was waitressing. That's, you know, I did, I waitressed for forever in LA, which is an incredible thing to do to meet everyone and all the artists and all the, um, all the creators here, because everyone is going out to eat, especially in the diner scene. But, um, you know, I was working. I was overworking my, what I call, slave job. I was um, drinking alcohol, smoking pot, you know, all of the, like, you know, maybe all the content that was coming out of my mouth wasn't, like, all the highest quality of, like, words and energy that it should have been and i was getting a very clear message from spirit that that had to change i was in the studio recording my first you know official album i was trying to and my voice just kept like shutting off it kept not working i got um like blisters on my vocal cords and they wanted to laser them off went to the doctor and went through this whole process and they wanted to laser them off and I wasn't about to let somebody take a laser to my vocal cords because damage can happen so um I felt like my only option was to, to go silent to stop using it and so I stopped speaking and I ended up not speaking for seven weeks a complete seven weeks but um you know, I had to quit my job and, and I having no idea where I was going to get income. Like I really, it was just such a leap of faith. I had to trust. I went through a few experiences of, um, you know, to go see like a voice teacher and we went to the doctor and they put cameras down my throat and I got to actually see what was going on. I went to see a medium, someone who talks to spirits on the other side, but she also talks to a, a a, a doctor, actual physical healer that she worked with when he was in the physical form. And now she still works with him when he's on the other side. And they had a look at my vocal cords and also made some, you know, statements about how my life needed to change. And um, 
when I saw the visual, it was the combination of the two. When I had that, um, the meeting with the healer and when I saw what the inside of my vocal cords looked like, I just, it scared me and I took it seriously. And the guy who was, I was recording with was like, we're not going to finish recording this album until you figure out what's going on with your vocal cords. So I opted to not have surgery and I decided to go silent. And, you know, more than just the difficulty of not speaking, we don't realize like how much we are using our voice all of the time. I had to stop interacting in my environment completely. So I identified with being waitress and connecting with all of the people the way that I did on a daily basis. I identified with being a performer and performing all of the time. Um, I was performing at least once a week and I had to stop doing all of that. And so mm -hmm. I got to have this, ex it ended up being an extremely spiritual experience because, you know, and I thought I was ready for it because I'm like, I meditate and I do yoga and all these things. And I was like, this is just going to be great. I'm going to be able to just go really deep within myself. But we live in this world and I'm pretty external. Like I'm an extrovert and an introvert as I'm, as I get older, I feel like I get a little bit more introverted. But at the time I was just so extroverted that when the day came that was like, okay, this is the day that I'm starting my silence. And it was midnight and I was at home and I was on the floor and I was ready and I was meditating. It was like, I actually had a very hard time going in as deep as I wanted to. And that was something I really had to work with because my idea of how deep I could go was very different from like how deep I needed to go now that I didn't have all of this energy being projected outwards. So I learned a lot about how much energy I, we all are expelling all of the time in communication. Um, and so, you know, that it makes you think about the kind of communication that's important, the way that you want to be communicating. What are you talking about? Um, I feel like some of the message was that what I was not, I was, with my energy, I wasn't supposed to be in a restaurant, like yelling over loud music, managing people in the kitchen and the floor and French fries and all of that. It just, it got to the point in my life where I started to, I needed to be doing my life's work in a different way. And so I had to be completely removed from my environments to do that. Um, and um, I just, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about, you know, I always felt like I needed to answer right away. Like I always needed to comment or I needed to share my opinion and what would happen. I had different tools that I would communicate with. I would write things down. I had like a magnetic kid's toy that I could kind of write things on, you know, for people. Um, and cell phones, you know, there was a lot of texting happening. But what would happen is, you know, you were interacting with someone and they were communicating normally, they were speaking, and that I'd be trying to interject, but and I couldn't necessarily. And by the time sometimes that I would, it would take me to get my paper out or start writing my response, they had already moved on past. And I learned, I learned one, that we don't always need to respond. We don't always need to respond immediately and every conversation doesn't need our input. Some of them, absolutely, but not all of them. And what it gave me was my own, it allowed me to retain my own energy and to really learn about that. And just to feel what it felt like to actually just hold it within my body and not just be sending it outside of me all the time. It also taught me that we're communicating constantly all the time anyway, even without the words. So me just being myself and existing and being present in the situation with myself being everything who I am at the moment, that message is already being conveyed. And I don't always need to say and speak it. So it created a lot of trust, it created a lot of awareness around what it is that I'm bringing to the table and how I'm showing up and the way that we all can read each other anyway, that way. And, um, and it, it has also taught me to be a better listener. My, my speaking and my communication changed a lot 
after that that period of time. Wow, wow. So like when you started speaking again, how did you move on and how did you feel after that experience of staying seven weeks without speaking in silence, yeah. being in silent? Um, well, the way that I started speaking um, was in a kind of interesting situation. So I had met someone that I had uh, like a, a love connection with and I had met this person right before I stopped speaking. So uh, it was a man that had been at one of my shows. Um, he's an artist and I had noticed him there and then we met him and, um, and then I quit speaking. And so then I met him again sometime in the future, like weeks or so in the future, maybe a week. And anyway, really had this connection with him and we decided to spend some time together and actually went out of town. So I live in Los Angeles. We went on a road trip. We drove up to Washington. We stayed up in Washington and we were in Oregon. We spent a lot of time out in the woods. So I developed this really powerful connection with him that wasn't about speaking. And he actually would participate in communicating with me where we would both write things down and neither of us would speak. Wow. And I love that. Yeah, it was, it was really cool, actually. It's a really amazing exercise for all people in relationships because we communicate differently when we're, when we're writing. And, um, you know, it's actually, I, I have that, I do that in my work. I do that in my group rituals. We can talk about that a little bit later where I give people the opportunity to write. You're communicating with yourself, but you're communicating in a different way. And things can come out at a different level of honesty when you're communicating that way, maybe then just speaking. So um, actually having that realization right now, I'm like, that's one of the reasons why that's so powerful to me and why I do that work with people. So, and I, so I had spent all this time with him and um, so maybe I even spent like around six weeks, you know, with him. And then I had decided, I had been talking to uh, a different voice coach, a healer, and he was really insistent that I started using the vocal cords because the state that they were in, they were actually going to atrophy and I needed to use them doing these specific exercises that he wanted me to do. So I was out in Washington and the moment just came over me where I was like, okay, this is the time to speak. Um, and so I speaking with this person who had never really experienced me speaking before. So um, he was tripping out, but for me, it, it was powerful to speak. It was powerful to speak again, have my voice again, and then have this person react to me in such a way. Um, part of me didn't want to, like in that situation, I wanted to communicate and I think I might have spoke with him and then was actually quiet again. Um, and, and then this it was something that I'll practice every once in a while just in my own life for retaining energy or um, taking care of my voice. I'll practice silence. Um, but there was something about that that I wasn't ready to let, that wasn't ready to let go of. There was something really that I was getting about my own personal practice and my own personal honoring of my energy that ha had been beginning to cultivate during this time that I wasn't able to use my voice in the way that I was. And I wasn't really ready to give it up yet. Um, so, so it was both, you know, it was both of that. And then just the technical things, you know, my voice still was really, it was almost like it was injured and that I still had to be really careful with it for like the next year. I couldn't really go to restaurants. I had to relearn how to speak. I had to relearn how to use my own voice speaking. Cause I was using it in a way, you know, I, whatever I had been practicing before that, I was working at graveyard uh, hours at restaurants. I loved that. I mean, I'm a musician. I was always up late and it was really great to go to work at 11 o'clock at night and work until four or six in the morning and then stay up all morning playing music and talking. And I had created this, you know, pattern of not sleeping at the times that were most healthy for my body. I was drinking a lot of coffee. Um, 
and like the extracurricular activities. And so I had been using my voice a lot during times where it was exhausted and where I wasn't really taking care of it. And so I create, I developed a way of speaking that was really gravelly and raspy and I really liked it, but it was really bad for my vocal cords. So I had to learn how to speak differently. And that took a while because just like anything, you know, when you, it's just like going on a diet, right? So you just, you know, go on a diet for six weeks and you're like, oh great, my diet's over. And then you just go back into your old ways of eating. And if what you're trying to do is change your behavior to a healthier one that supports you, it has to change. It's not just taking a break from it and going back. So that was still a learning process for me. I couldn't go to bars and restaurants and talk in this way that I used to talk because I'd blow out my voice. I just blow it out. Um, so I had to, the voice that I had not used for singing for so many years when I was younger because I was afraid was now the thing that I was like, I didn't have access to anymore because I didn't take care of it, didn't honor it and I didn't protect it. So it, the, it allowed me the experience of learning how to honor and protect my voice. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, Jane. Wow. That's an, a whole experience in itself, I'm telling you. <laughs> so what would you say to people out there with everything that is happening and they feel like the things that they, were, they, they used to do going to work, doing a lot of things, and now they're at home, they can go out or go to work or many other things that they can, you know, we can't really do as we used to do. What would you say to them during this time? What would you say to them, you know, to help them, um, I don't know, like stay positive and maybe get out of that situation where they feel maybe frustrated or stressed out and feel like what is happening asking themselves all these questions and they're feeling like they don't have the answer i feel i and i feel like some of the answers in that story that i've told but it's these things that i've gone through in my life that have taught me you know what it is that i'm about to share but i always i think that there's always a reason and um some of us believe that things happen for a reason so that you learn certain things, so that you can develop certain skills and apply them to your life. But even for someone who doesn't believe that or they're not sure if they believe that, there's always an opportunity to learn from the situation that you're in. And there is always an opportunity to gain wisdom and there is, you can find something positive in everything. And I'm not somebody that's like, oh, just only look for the positive. I'm a Scorpio, I'm about I'm about looking in the shadow. I'm about going into the darkness and into the depth and working with all the stuff that isn't like all pretty and just happy and comfortable. I'm about all of that. And at the same time, something that I think is powerful is to look at what is positive in this situation. What opportunity do you have? What is something that you can learn? Or what are you learning? Like, what are you learning? And so, we're in this place where so many things have been taken from us and we're all having the thing that's powerful about this is that across the planet we are all experiencing this now just like everything else in life we're all we are all having our unique experience with it and and there's different categories of us and some of us have been sick and some of us maybe have family members that have been sick some people have had people that have died some people have lost their jobs some people have no money some people are stuck at home in a situation they don't want to be stuck at with people around some people are stuck at home by themselves and that they're alone so you know in everyone's situation there's a gift and every we're all dealing with the loss of something we're all dealing with some kind of restriction and there's frustration that comes along with it. But if we were to step all the way outside and look down at this experience or look at it like we were having a movie, you know, the movies that are really good that we love so much, we are watching these characters go through 
stuff that is painful and frustrating and that's what makes the movie good is that they go through this awful experience and it's like how do they come out of it the awful experience never becomes erased it is always part of the story but it's how do you respond to the situation and how you responded yesterday also doesn't dictate the way that you're going to respond to the rest of it like you can have responded one way and you can look at that and you can be like you know that really didn't serve me actually to respond that way what if instead i chose to respond this way um i talk a lot about sacred purpose um it's my m the thing that's most important to me is serving my sacred purpose while i'm here in this body in this lifetime on this planet and and I, I really like to encourage other people to kind of look at what that is. And, you know, it is very sacred, but that doesn't mean that we can't find it. Like, it doesn't mean it has to be complicated. It's also very simple. I think the ways that we are meant to serve are, have been with us always. What are the things that you love to do? What are the things that make you really happy? Just that that's infectious other people respond to that or what, like it's music if it's music other people experience that if it's being a really good mother it's how you're raising your children or how you're nurturing people at home right there's every there's all of the things and so a lot of people come to me and they're like i'm trying to figure out what my sacred purpose is and i just and and so we talk about that like well what is it that you're naturally good at what are the things in your life that make you happy? And maybe you're doing them and maybe you're not doing them. But another thing too is, is we look at your trauma that you've experienced and that's relative and we've all experienced it on some level. Some people have really heavy traumas that they've experienced and some people maybe in comparison to that have lighter traumas that they've experienced. But the hard times that you've gone through in your life, they teach you. They teach you about how you respond, like I was saying, but they, they give you the experience of that so that somewhere else in your life, you're gonna have that experience to be able to share with somebody else. And that's a huge thing about human contact, why we're here together and why we each are having a different experience and a different story because you might have something similar in your life it's not going to be the exact same, but my story and my telling of my story can inspire you. It can also make you feel safe and held and understood. So if you experience some kind of trauma in your life that maybe is rare that not a lot of people have experienced, it's not like you really want somebody else to have experienced something so traumatic and painful in their life. But if you do meet someone that has, the connection that you feel, the way that you feel like somebody has understood you is powerful. It's really powerful. I mean, for everyone that's listening, I mean, you can think about the times you have felt misunderstood. You feel like nobody else understands this. And can you imagine what it would be like to meet someone that does understand? Or if you have had that experience when you meet someone else and they know what you're talking about, maybe it's in an abusive relationship you're with. I mean, I could go off, you know, and there's my, in my, in my own life, my younger brother broke his neck. Um, people that like have listened to my podcast or hear, I, it's something that I've shared about a lot, especially when I was younger, it was a huge part of my life. My younger brother broke his neck when he was 20 and he's quadriplegic. And the way that that affected my family and the way that it affected my life and the way that I saw life and all of that, it was so powerful for me um, to talk about it. It was so part of my growth. It was so part of me realizing how I, how I respond in traumatic situations. What are my gifts? How do I show up? Um, so anyway, and that's, that's its own story, but in all of these years, it's been like 20, 20, wow, 20 years this year, in all of these years, I have never ever met someone that said, I have a brother too, until this last year I was in Joshua Tree and I was camping on this woman's property and I had been there to camp a few times so we were getting to know each other. And she was talking about how she's from LA and she lived here when she was my age 
and then because I was wanting to move out there and get a house out there and create a ritual space and so I was just asking her about why she moved out there and how she likes living out there and she's telling me that the reason that she moved out there was because her younger brother had broke his neck and was quadriplegic and he lived out there and had his own house it was giving me chills it was just a couple miles away from her and that I was, I, that was, it was amazing for me to hear that somebody was, she didn't know that about me. I hadn't shared my story and to hear her saying that just, there was just this sensation that came over me and just to feel that sort of connection. And that's something that's important for us. And so bringing it back to what you were talking about, about our current situation, that is what's powerful about right now is that we are all experiencing this together and we're experiencing it in different ways and so the fact that we're all experiencing it together gives us a little bit more of an ability to empathize or understand what somebody else is going through that might not be the part that we're going through but we can all understand each other and also this is what's been so powerful about us responding to things that we're seeing in media media might be a little bit out of control but what's going on with um with people's lives not being respected and everything in the black lives matter movement and what we're how we're all seeing it and experiencing that together in a way that for so long it has been like different aspects of culture um and, you know just white culture people who are not experiencing the same who are not experiencing that the same. It hasn't been really in the front of them. They haven't had to see it and feel it in the way that now that we are all in this together and people are in ex having an experience of loss and being really overly sensitive because of fear or because of what they can't do, all of a sudden they're in a place where they can empathize and they can feel what is going on with others. And there's um, you know, with all the fires that we just had and all these people losing their homes, we, we had fires, uh, there's fires, you know, we had fires last year and they were pretty bad. It was like two years ago, but something about the fires happening this time and everybody being like, I can't imagine what it would be like to lose my home and everything I own and the one place that I could be safe from the virus and everything. I can't imagine on the top of everything else that to people to lose their homes right now. And so I think it's really helping for empathy. I think it's really helping for people to understand each other. And so that's important. That's so important and it's so powerful. And people in the spiritual realms, in the spiritual world, everybody's always talking about ascension and everybody wants to ascend and be in the fifth dimension and be in this new paradigm and this is what is going to cause this new, this is the new paradigm. This is causing the new paradigm. And it's, and this is a really long answer, but, um, but also it's giving, with everything being so broken down, it's also giving us the opportunity to create something new and something different from the, from the smallness, a very important, but just the smallness of like each, our own individual life our own individual experience that we create to what we are all creating together in the forms of community, in the forms of government, on and on, right? Yeah, that is powerful. That is powerful. Thank you so much for, sh for sharing from your heart. Thank you so much. So, um, Let's be going on something relaxing in a little bit. I know I've found you like, you know, making all these things that you've gone through. Mia, my next question was going to be about your younger brother being paralyzed and you've talked about that. So now I know you have different rituals that you, you know, you do when, you know, to keep yourself aligned and focus on the things that you want to do maybe during the day or, you know, just to stay aligned and stay focused. Can you share some of that with us? I know many people out there would like to, you know, get something that can help them, especially during this time. Breathing. First of all, right? Have the breath. Um, 
So I'll just tell you some of the things, you know, and then I'll share with you the sound of something. Um, really taking some time alone is really important because you can hear. And so that's not necessarily going to apply to everyone. If you're someone that's at home and you're freaking out about being alone, okay, so maybe that answer is not for you. But if you're at, if you're in a home where there's a lot of people, there's a lot of, if you're a mom and you have people that you're taking care of, if you're a, a partner and you're taking care of your partner, if you are a family member and you have your mom and your dad and your brothers and like everyone else around you, taking some time to be alone so that you can just hear your own thoughts, but also don't have to facilitate and listen to anyone else's. So can you go on a walk? Going on a walk outside. I take a bath every day. So I really like to work with the elements. I like to take a bath and I like to sit in the water. I like to just close my eyes and re release any kind of tension into the bath <sighs> I'm sitting in. Um, I do go out hiking, so I go to the trees. There's something that happens when we put our feet on the earth. Even if they're just in your shoes, you walking on the earth is very different than walking on cement all of the time. So whether it's beach, whether it's grass, whether it's mountains, sand, go out there. Just go out there. Another part of everything that we're experiencing right now is the earth. Our planet, the earth, is very much having an experience as well. Like we are an organism that lives on the planet. There is a virus that's going around, but also all of the fires, the climate change, floods, droughts, all of that. Like our planet, if you look at what's going on with our planet, she is having an experience as well. So being able to, if you can walk barefoot, if you can give some energy back to her in the form of water, in the form of like releasing your energy, um, that is really powerful. Getting in her, getting in the water, getting in the ocean, um, being in the rain. She needs healing too. And really connecting with her is really powerful because our entire bodies are made up of the earth. We eat things that grow from the earth. And so participating in that, like, that nature of being able to give back to her something, walking on her, just connecting with her energy, it's really rejuvenating. Um, one of the meditations that I do with people is about releasing their energy down to the earth and then breathing it back up into their body and breathing it all the way up and then out their crown chakra and then down again and having that experience. Um, I sing. So whether one thinks that they have a good voice or not, our, the sound that our body makes in each one of our bodies makes a completely different sound. We, this is an instrument. This is the instrument, all of it, not just here, but like the whole thing. This body makes the sound that is healing for it. And so vibrating, this is why oming, you know, when people ohm, and when people chant is really powerful. Om is said to be the vibration that the earth makes. The, actu the earth actually does vibrate at a certain frequency that, that is an om sound. So you can connect with the earth by oming. And somebody who does like, well, I don't do that. I mean, just humming, just humming anything is powerful. Um, and so another thing that I have is I have many sound bowls. So I believe that we are our own sound bowl. So when we're like releasing our own voice, that's why I like this drum, you know, this drum, I don't know how well you can hear it on the recording. It has a very reverberating sound if you sing up to it. And it, it allows your voice to kind of vibrate here and become bigger outside of your body so that you can feel it. And that's a really fun experience to have. And then oh, I dropped. Oh no. 
I dropped my here. I dropped my instrument for this. So another thing that is really amazing to do is to listen to music and listen to something like a sound bowl because as this starts to vibrate, it will activate vibration inside of your own body. And so I'll just, we'll just do this for an experience so that you can all hear it. Wow. You can release so much. So this is a way I really like to work with sound. After I do, um, you know, I perform, I perform as regular musicians do. I'll perform in a bar or a club or something like that. But um, my favorite way is to you know, create ritual, uh, do women's circles, and to play music inside of there because it becomes more ceremonial, it becomes more ritualistic. It just, it's, there's a little bit more of a special element to it. Um, and after I do all that, so I'll sing. There's a lot of, you know, and singing to another thing. It's the vibration, but it's also the breath. When we move the breath through our body, you know, it's how we express. It's the breath that is, is how we speak and how we're releasing sound, whether it's positive or negative. If you're angry and you're exploding and you're needing to communicate that way, it's in your breath. If you, the way that you breathe with your lover, the way that like you sing your favorite song, the way that you say, I love you to someone that you love, to your pets, to your children, to your friends, it's all coming through with the breath. And so for me personally, after I do like my healing work of singing and really putting this energy out, having that energy like move through my body is just like I've just experienced the sound bowl for like an hour. And it's just really powerful. I was, you know, I was saying to you, we were kind of talking about sound earlier and our bodies are like what, 70, 80% water. I know there's a percentage, I always forget mm -hmm. exactly what it is. But we know how the moon, for example, and this is one reason why I like to have ceremonies and performances on the full moon. We know what the moon does to the waves, right? That's why surfers gotta like check the tide before they go surfing. It has to do with the moon. The moon is pulling on those tides. So maybe the moon is also pulling on the water in your body that way. We've seen those studies that they've done on water when they project certain sound or when they project certain words at the water and how the water will form crystals. You can see what it looks, there's a study if you haven't seen it, there's, you can see what the water looks like when people are saying love and they're vibrating the word love and energy of love towards the water. And then they've done the exercise where they're projecting hate and anger. They've actually done it for all of the different words. And so you can see the different ways that the crystals have formed inside of the water. Um, this is all, this is the way that, this way that water responds to vibration, the way that it responds to sound. And so also when you play music, the body responds and we're all water inside of here. So that's another thing, like putting on music that you're intentionally putting on for relaxation, 
for meditation, um, you know, it's different than I really love metal myself, but you know, if you listen to metal that has, that is really aggressive and you, and it has energy, like hateful energy, which that exists, you know, out there, you're going to have a different experience. And so it's fine if you want to have that, but in order to calm the body down, to calm the nervous system down, and you need to intentionally be listening to something that is designed for that. Wow. That is so profound. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is really profound. Wow. Uh, so. Well, about these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't it amazing the connection we've ha we have with our environment and the earth as a whole? The connection is really powerful, especially when we understand that, right? It is. It is really great. So. You also said in time of stress and pressure, you, yes, you play music, you do the things that you love, you know, and the things that make you feel good and feel safe. When you talk about feeling safe, what makes you feel safe? What is safe? is a place where I can exhale, is the place that I can let go. Um, and so we have to create, we have to create that or we have to find that for ourselves. Um, like if I'm in a bath, that is some place that makes me feel safe. But I'm, I'm you know, I'm in, I'm in my room with the doors closed. I know that like I'm in a safe room and then I can be in the bath and I can let go. I can go um, to a beautiful place to go hiking where I feel like that is a safe place for me to go. So there's different explanations of safety, but sometimes it's not, if we're experiencing a lot of things emotionally or if we're self-judgment, judgment from others, drama at home, any of those things, it's not safe for us to just be how we are being. Um, and that's the thing I think when people are going through a lot of personal struggle, sometimes they don't have a place where they feel safe enough to just let go and be who they are. Um, you know, a lot of relationships don't allow for that. We all need everybody to just be strong and perfect for us all of the time, right? So. Sometimes it's, I think it's not part of culture to just, it's becoming that way, but just to be allowed to be how you are, be, ha be able to show up like how honest you are and maybe messy because you're going through something at the time. And so that's a level of safety, being able to um, be in a place where you can just let all the way go. You know, that's what I love about women's circles. I mean, we haven't been having them because of the pandemic and everything, but um, it's been something that's been really beautiful for me. And uh, why I started holding women's circles was to be in a group of women. And sometimes it was even women that I didn't know. And to be in a circle that is created for sharing and letting go and even sharing the parts of you that are not, you know, so pretty and put together. Yeah. And be in a place that is designed for that and you have all of these other women there that are holding the space for you to fall apart, um, that's really powerful. So, so whether it's a person that you need, whether it's music you need to listen to, whether it's going someplace else and finding quiet time, I think that that's a, an element of safety that is really important for me, is to be able to just be how I am how I'm feeling and, and not have to have that, you know, be all packaged up and perfect, you know, for, for someone else. Wow. That question? Sure, sure. And um, beautifully put as well. Beautifully put. So what would you say to, or what advice would you give to your 21 old, 21 year old self today?
to trust myself, I would tell her, trust yourself. Trust your intuition, always. Trust how you're feeling and how you are responding to any given situation. Trust it as valid. Trust that is your personal truth. Um, you know, when I was 21, I thought I knew everything. And so, um, I think it's part of the learning experience, right? Our egos kind of build up around that time because we're out of high school and we're an adult for a couple years and like, we think we know everything. Yeah. Um, and so part of the great unlearning that happens in our twenties is the idea that we know everything and then learning a lot of times the hard way that we don't know. And the more times that happens, we realize that there's so much to learn. And that's what gives us the ability to be open. And that's how we start to learn perspective. Um, and that really helps when you're going some through, when you're going through something new and you don't like it and it's frustrating. Um, the, the awareness, the memory that, you know what, I don't know everything. I don't know everything. And part of this experience is going to teach me the things that I don't know. So I would just tell her it's going to be like, it's going to be okay. Nothing is going to be what you think it is going to be like. You are not even going to be the person that you think that you are going to be. And so just allow, just allow yourself to fall apart allow yourself to be wrong and be honest just be honest about it i love that <laughs> yeah i do i love that thank you so much jane for sharing from your heart and taking time out of your busy schedule to be here tonight i really appreciate that and yeah can you share something with us before we close? Or do you have anything that you want to, uh, you have a podcast as well. I do. So is there anything else you want to share to us about what you do, your podcast and everything before we go to the next step? Yeah. I wanted to, thank God I didn't forget that. <laughs> um, I do have a podcast. Um, I have a podcast that's called the Silver Lake Priestess Podcast. Silver Lake Priestess is the name of my spiritual business where I do things like spiritual life coaching. I read tarot cards. Um, I do women's circles. I do priestess trainings and priestess retreats where I take women with me and we go to Avalon, which is a place in England where I believe I was a priestess in my past life. And we go there and we play these drums and we sing in sacred places and sacred sites and I sing for you. So I do that. Um, and, uh, it's not just for women. I've opened it up and I do group ritual. So, um, I do travel and do this, but I, I'm in LA. So most of the time, um, I'm doing ritual and sound bath here. And it's a full experience where people come with their yoga mats and their journals and it'll always be on a new moon or a full moon. And I teach you about the astrology of the day and what's going on. And you get a, an experience to personally reflect on what's going on for you. And you can just show up how it is that you are. And the whole thing has music involved in it. So I'm a musician, I go by Jamie Black and you can find me on Spotify and iTunes and my music is very ethereal. It's very beautiful. There's a lot of love songs that I wrote when I was younger. And then now everything is, it's, I still write love songs, but I have a lot of music that is geared towards ritual practice, like the experience of ritual. So I bring music into the experience so that you can close your eyes and ask your guides or ask your, your inner self, how am I feeling today? What, what am I showing up with? What is something that I want to let go of so that I can move forward? We do cool things like I bring my cauldrons to the shows and you get to come up 
it's part of it. You, you write down what you're letting go of and you get to come up and light it on fire in the cauldron while I'm banging the drums and singing. And it's really powerful to have this sound moving. And I have a friend that plays cello with me and another friend that plays violin and another friend who plays drums with me and we sing and I play the guitar and it's just like beautiful and also kind of witchy. It's very spiritual. It's very just, it allows it to move through your body so that you can feel this whole experience. And it's really just an experience to honor yourself, where you are, where you're at, maybe some intentions that you want to set and some things that you're honoring about your journey. So that's the thing. That's my favorite thing that I'm doing right now. So you can find me at jamieblack.com and Jamie spelled J-A-I-M-E. Everything is there. Um, my music is there. You can get a free song that is used for meditation. If you go to jamieblack.com forward slash song, or if you just follow along on the website, you go under music and there's a tab that says free song. So the point of this is I give it to people after they come to my rituals so that then they can go home with their journal and their candle that they lit for their intention and everything. And then I, I have the music to offer them, which is something that we played for them live that they can go home and turn this piece of music on and recreate that experience for themselves. It's really about honoring the self and the experience that we're having right now because we can't have a different experience anyway, right? So I like to give that to people that come and have that experience with me. So I have it on my website for any of you that would love to hear my music. And also it'll give you a seven minute meditation. A lot of people are like, oh, I just, too long i don't know how to meditate it's great you can either put it on repeat because it's perfect it'll just it'll go but also if you only have time to just sit and close your eyes you can lay down you can use it to fall asleep anyway that's there um and then and i haven't even shared this with anyone else i have um i have a brand new album that's coming out in october Ooh. and it's called season of the witch and what it is, it's all of my like really witchy songs. And it just means like dark, dark and mysterious and beautiful. There's a lot of like really, there's a lot of drums. There's a lot of cello. There's a lot of like very ethereal vocals that don't all have words. So it allows it to be what it is meant to be for you. Um, and we're putting it out in October because this is the time and it's a live album. We recorded it during quarantine. We got together and, you know, we all stood in our various places and we just recorded, like we recorded what we do live together in the room. So that's coming on all that information is gonna be on, on my Facebook. I'm on Instagram at Silver Lake Priestess and Jamie Black Music. Um, Cause I got both of those things going on. And my podcast is, is everywhere. It's on iTunes, it's on Spotify, it's on my website, it's on Anchor. So, and I, um, I'm so glad that we met. I just feel like it was, you know, it's just one of those ways we meet people like on the internet nowadays. And I, this, I, I've been, I feel so honored to be on your show and I really appreciate the work that you're doing. And on my podcast specifically, I interview women that do spiritual work. I interview women that are serving their sacred purpose, that are attempting to do that, that are using their gifts and the things that they're good at to create good in this world and to help affect other people. And so, you know, we were, we were doing this and I'm like, oh, I just, I want to have you on my podcast so that I can share you, you know, with all of my listeners and everything. Cause I think this work is really, important and it's really needed right now. And, um, and I just, I really honor you for doing this work right now and, and creating something for people that are at home and maybe having a hard time or maybe that are having an okay time and still just like want to be part of connecting with people in this way and, and learning about what's going on with others. And, um, you know, we're so, I think we're so much more aware right now than maybe like ever as a collective that we are all in this together we are all going through this together and we each have pieces for each other every single one of us 
every single one of us has magic and medicine for someone else. And so thank you for bringing your magic and sharing this medicine with everyone. Thank you so much. Wow, Jamie. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you so much. I am honored and it's been a pleasure to have, you know, to talk to you for this hour and just talking to you on the phone the other day, I felt also that connection. So I am so grateful. I'm so thankful that you accepted and that you're here today and that you shared from your heart because I know the impact and not only sharing, you gave, you gave you all. You're sharing from the heart and even talking about, about what you do. I think coming together in platforms like this is very important during this time. And I really, really appreciate you. I thank you. And I'm honored to be on your podcast. So we're going to work on that time together. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so thanks again. I'm sure you have something else to share with us before we put an end to this episode. Right. I'm excited to listen. Oh, something else you want to share with us. Maybe your music, one of the little tunes or sounds. I don't know. Well, you want to hear something else like that. again Jamie thanks yeah. thanks a lot Jane okay we've come to the end of this episode and we really just want to thank you you're like my first guest who had to like really perform and do something on the show so I really appreciate this thank you so much I had a wonderful and great time with you and I'm sure that our listeners will also will do same you know and just you know feel this peace and feel you know and take those deep breaths to release themselves from anything that is holding them back and you know, look at life with coming from that place, you know, and many of the things that you have shared with us here today. And I hope that we all take advantage of it. We all learn from your experiences and that you've shared with us. And not only that, uh, this episode, your website and every information you have, I will have this on the description box of this episode. So listeners can, you know, connect with you directly. And they can reach out to you, they can go on your website, they can visit you, you know, connect with you in, in any of these forms. So once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. So <laughs> yes, this is the end. So bye for now from Inside, Inside Out Alignment and see you on the next episode.